Hi everybody, Mary Long here with the Plein Air Painter Chicago and this week I am pleased that uh, Steve Petrick is back with us as guest artist. Of course Steve and I kind of, he was the um, brains behind the beginning of the creation of all this. So uh, Steve, I'm really glad you're back here as the uh, guest artist. Welcome. Glad to be here. Um, tell us about your schedule these days. Uh, I bet you're busy with workshops and things. Yes, I, I do have two good workshops uh, coming up. One is at the end of the month. Uh, we've got um, August 29th and 30th. We're going to be at Dawes Park in Evanston for a two-day workshop. So uh, I'd welcome anybody part of the Plain Air Painters of Chicago to come out and, and, and join us. Uh, it's you know, going to be also add in there that Dawes Park is not just a park. It's actually the um, Evanston Historical Society and the Dawes House. That's where Richard Schmidt painted and it's in his landscape book. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, so I think we painted there last summer, but it's a beautiful location. And I've been walking over there maybe uh, at least twice a week. Um, just up and down the lakeshore there, and it's absolutely gorgeous. So, um, and there's restrooms right there. We're gonna have um, lake views, uh, architecture, trees, people. The second uh, event is in conjunction with the Barrington Paint Out on September 13th. It's a Sunday, it's a one day workshop. We're, we'll do it at Citizens Park in, in Barrington right behind the, uh, the library there. And um, last year, you know, a number of folks attended. Uh, I'm also offering up free admission to any uh, high school student that is uh, interested in learning uh, plein air painting. Uh, so free of charge, any high school student wanting to come out to learn to paint with us that's uh, that's free of charge. So that's all through my website, uh, stevepatrick.com. You can find all that information and sign up. So, hey. so Steve, what are you going to be talking about tonight? Today we, we're going to be uh, talking about art. <laughs> and let me uh, let me share my screen. Um, we're going to be talking about. Uh, pulling lines and lines in particular is going to be one of the elements of, uh, of design that I think is very underrated, seldom used and, and even rarely understood. Um, but it has a, a tremendous influence on the emotion that your piece has and this I Posted a, a graphic that I use in my handouts. Uh, this is the graphic, more or less uh, reformatted for the, the screen here. But I just want to just talk about these five different lines that are up here in nature and in our landscapes um, and the emotions that they, they depict which uh, horizontal lines, you're going to see some really gorgeous horizontal paintings today. And I just want you to feel the rest, calm, and tranquility that those horizontal lines uh, emote in, in your emotions. So um, you're going to see some vertical lines. Uh, those pull out the height, nobility, and passion emotions within, uh, within the viewers. You're going to see some spirals. Those depict expansion and contraction. Uh, you're going to see some curved lines, some flow and activity and rhythm. Um, I love the curved lines uh, within those uh, compositions, as well as diagonal lines, which bring out the growth, energy, and movement within the work. Um, my teacher, uh, Mr. Hall, Eugene Hall, at the American Academy of Art, taught us how to pull lines. And this is a, uh, these are just sketches of pull, pulled lines. And it's just an act of, of taking the arm and using the arm to actually pull that line across your canvas. Not 
using the fingers or the, even the hand, but the whole arm. It's, an, it's a gestural motion that brings out that emotion within, uh, within your paintings. Um, with that, let's go on into the art. Um, I've, we're avoiding Facebook at all costs tonight. So I put everything into Photoshop. So I, I hope you'll, uh, you'll enjoy this, um, this little effort here. Um, first off is uh, Deborah's painting. Deborah has a really nice uh, watercolor painting of uh, the, up in the top left corner is, is, the, uh, is the reference photo. Um, it's just a simple bush, tree, small tree, but she's captured a, a really nice effort on the shapes that this tree creates. Uh, down the left side here, I have uh, points for her to consider and for everybody to consider uh, in improving or commenting on, on the painting itself. Um, Deborah, focus on uh, more on the design and composition of the entire piece. If you're going to be doing a, a tree study, let that tree stand alone. You know, don't feel like you have to put an, even another tree in, in there, or even background trees. You know, the tree itself is is enough to, to stand alone, especially if it's in the center of that composition. You could create just some random shapes back here of, of cool darks to really let this tree stand out. Um, if you do have a background, um, cool this off, make sure it stands apart from the colors and the warm colors of the, the foreground tree. But overall, really good shape making. Uh, Lynette. Lynette has this beautiful piece of uh, kind of a seascape slash uh, landscape. Again, a nice horizontal composition. Look at the line work in this. It just brings out the emotion of, of calm and tranquility. Uh, she does introduce these mountain themes, the mountain shapes and, and hills. Um, and that's introducing, you know, some additional emotions in there. Um, I have um, used edges to your advantage, Lynette. Um, the hard edges that you have in the water down here is attracting quite a bit of attention. I think the hero of this of this painting, this center of focus, is going to be this area right in here. Uh, it's, it's got the highest contrast, you know, con more concentration of brushwork. Um, um, so use edges to your advantage, create, you know, even a sharper edge back in here and soften up this area. A beautiful color right in this area. Um, very nicely done. Um, The other uh, comment on here is that uh, Scott talked about actually last week, in addition to um, his excellent critique was, was um, the um, darkness of this water is, is going to actually be a little bit lighter if, if the mountain itself here or the, the tree clusters of trees is, is this dark it's going to be a little bit lighter than this in the water. Likewise, the sky, the lightness of the sky is going to be a little bit darker, which I think you, you have. But just like this needs to be a little bit lighter in the reflections. Okay, Susan. Thank you. Sure. This is a beautiful little piece by Susan, Susan Haiti. Um, the design, look at the design. It's got 
again, a, a really good leading line here and uh, going up the steps. Um, we see some activity up in here, but it's, it's drawing our attention and our eye up to this architecture, up to this nice little steeple. Um, again, really good flow. Uh, it's a nice curve in that overall composition. Um, good aerial perspective. I love how you treated this, this background architecture. Real soft lines. Uh, you've got you've captured the air in this painting. Um, and then middle ground is good. Good values, good light. Um, I would watch the um, your focal point. I would you know the focal point in this is is really going to be this arch piece of architecture up in here. It's leading all the eye up to this, this point right in here. Uh, this area down in here might be a little strong for that. Uh, my eye keeps going back to here, but it wants to live up here. So just, just watch uh, the strength of this shape, the warmth and the brightness of those colors. Okay, good. Andrea. Beautiful piece, Andrea. This is uh, uh, this is a reference photo here. Again, a really nice, simple tree study. But she's she's taken it to the extreme, and this is a very difficult thing to do, is to capture that backlight uh, greenery. Um, in the in the background, and still have a nice cool foreground. So she's she knows the rules of, of you know warm coming forward and, and cool going back, but she broke those rules and put the warmth in the background and the coolness in the foreground. And I think this works. It works um, quite well. I love the energy and the passion you have in your brushwork. The amount of paint, you're not afraid to lay that paint down. So overall, a really good piece. Thanks, Steve. Good. Lori, good job on this one, Lori. Um, the leading lines on this one, again, nice, strong, solid diagonal shape of the, uh, the lily pads coming into a nice horizontal, which again, depicts that calm, tranquil scene. Um, I love the water. Uh, the values that you have in the water are spot on. The darkness that you have in here, which may be too, a little too dark for that distant shape, but um, the reflect in the, the value that you have in the water for that dark is, is spot on. Uh, the sky, the light of the sky is, is um, a little bit darker in the water. So the water reads really well. Um, so again, I would lighten up this area a little bit more. Uh, by lightening that up, you're gonna push that back even further. And then go all out on the lilies. Um, look at Monet when you're painting these lilies um, and just admire the color and the freedom that he put down in, in his lily pads and the flowers that he has. Um, you know, you could, you could throw some more color into, into here and that would certainly bring those forward. Um, and again, Watch the power of the edges, you know, have some hard ed harder edges in the foreground here. Um, watch the hardness back in here. But um, put all your strength out in here. This is just support for this. Thank you. Okay. Maureen, beautiful piece on this one, Maureen. Um, good composition, it's, it's a, um, either a pattern or a scattered composition. Um, 
I think this is the sketch, an initial sketch that you did. Uh, and then this is the final painting. Um, good, strong use of color. Um, it's hard for me to dis discern where the light is coming from, if, it's, if the light's coming straight down or, or from the left. Uh, I would I would throw some more shadows in some of these forms of flowers just to get uh, some three D elements within those flowers and certainly maybe on the, uh, on the, the uh, planter on the planter yeah I think okay. that'll help okay thanks uh, okay all right thank you. Richard, Richard didn't have a, a reference photo on this one. So we're just gonna critique the art itself. And, and this is a beautiful piece, Richard. Uh, you're doing some really good work lately. Um, just pay attention to where your eyes are going. You know, it's, it's, it's going up in here. Uh, you're seeing some birds, some activity, uh, animation down in here. Um, but your eye is occupying here, and then you notice the number five, which is, again, um, kind of pointing to uh, any kind of uh, number or words are going to be additional magnets for your eye. But this, the way you treated this five is so subtle, it's just barely, barely legible. Um, Beautiful work in here. Look at the shape, simple shapes he's, he's just created. Um, excellent work. Again, horizontal is, uh, is again, emoting that, that long, tranquil uh, scene. Beautiful sky that supports this. Um, good job, Richard. Shannon. Uh, looked like Shannon was with Clayton Beck, so we're going to have two paintings like this tonight. Um, but this is a uh, a really good example of um, painting a portrait in in the landscape, and it's it's very difficult to do this because of the lighting and and the effect of of clouds and wind and you know whatever very un uncontrollable. Uh, circumstances, but um, I want to say watch the design on this, Shannon. Uh, you've got a nice strong shapes. This this shape here, this shape here, these shapes are all super strong. Um, the center of interest is her, and um, and typically with if you're doing a portrait, it's going to be in the face, the, the center of interest. But my eye, because of this tangent right down in here, you've got the arm, the branch, and the arm, her arm, all leading up to right in here. So my eye wants to, to go up here, but it, it's just being pulled down into here. Um, ask yourself, is this branch even needed? Uh, if you hold your hand up to that, branch and imagine that it's not even there i think it's a it's a stronger painting um watch the brightness of this green um give the the, the skin color a little you know this as rich as this green is put that richness in the in the skin color uh and and diminish the green a little bit uh you could do that with glazing uh, you could warm her up with glazing as well. Um, but good overall 3D forms. I'm, I'm seeing the roundness of these tr this tree. I'm seeing the roundness of this cushion, her billowy dress. Uh, very good, Shannon. Thanks, Steve. Mary, great job on this one, Mary. Uh, I love the overall shapes. This umbrella is so 3D. Um, it's, it's, it's great. Um, watch the brightness of this, of this water. It's just, I 
think it's blowing the uh, the uh, the color palette. Um, looks like cerulean or phthalo. Cobalt. Cobalt. Cobalt uh, teal. Cobalt teal. Okay. Yeah, watch watch that. It, it, it's it's a super strong color. Again, good, good overall shapes. Uh, I love the umbrella. Try to work a lighter touch on the, the tree shapes. This is a, a, a soft lacy tree. And, um, and the shapes that these leaves are, are forming are, are heavy. It feels heavy to me. Uh, I think you can lighten up the green, just get us, a lighter green um, overall and um, don't go so heavy and watch your sky holes get a little softer edges on those it's uh, super sharp on those uh, the contrast you have enough contrast in here that you could you could avoid you don't need a hard contrast up in here Good job on this one. Deborah. Uh, I love Deborah's work. Uh, it's, it's, there's a, a sense of um, uh, almost childlike wonder I get from your work, uh, Deborah. Like uh, primitive, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm trying. <laughs> you are. But you nailed the greens on this one. And I, I want everybody to pay attention to these greens because they're spot on. Um, don't lose this green. Whatever you're doing, it's, it's beautiful. You've got the nice warm gray, yet gray green back in the distance here. And then you got it darks and cools and then you, you're hitting it with the hot up in here. And then the, then the long grass, is you've got good shapes in here, got a good variety of greens. Um, watch the perspective on these uh, tents. Uh, I think the first thing you want to establish is, you know, a uh, horizontal um, horizon line. Uh, typically, the horizon line, if you're standing up, painting this, the horizon line is going to be at the eyes of all the people. And it doesn't matter where those people oh. are, whether they're up close or way off in the distance, all their eyes are going to line up right at the horizon. Line. So you, what this is almost like a drone view, like you, you're almost 12 feet up in the air. And your horizon line is is way up here. It's all those those diagonals. So if you're if you're ever confused about the horizon line, it's always going to be at the eye level of everybody else in the painting, unless there's hills and, and things like that that's going to be pushing them up. But um, the other thing I want to wanted to say about this is the umbrellas are, are amazing. Uh, good shapes. Um, I love how you implied these people in. You, you didn't feel like you need to describe everything. This was something that Scott was talking about last week, which I wrote down is, you know, the differences between implied and described. Uh, that's appearing in a number of these paintings. So you'll see a pattern going on. Watch uh, the high contrast between this red one and that yellow one. It's in the photo and you replicated it well, but is that where you want the center of interest to be? It's that high contrast between red and yellow, dark and light, sharp edge, that's just calling my attention right here. Um, if you don't want that to be the center of interest, pick a different spot and soften this up. Um, soften the edges or, or 
you know, lighten the value on this one, darken the value on this one. But uh, overall, good, good job. Thank you so much. Sure. Karen, this is a beautiful piece, Karen. Uh, I love the choices that you've made when you're, uh, you decided, and, and the photo here also had this big, beautiful red tree way off in the distance. I zoomed in on it on, on, uh, on a reference photo, but she just picked out this shrub that was appealing to her and just painted that. And that often works well. Uh, you don't need the, to paint the whole scene. If, if there's an element in that reference photo or scene that you want to paint that's attracting your eye, just zoom in on that um, and just tell that simple story. Again, good long diagonal lines or uh, horizontal lines that, again, bring calm and tranquil setting and then it's leading up us up good connection of this shape to this shape to um just random chaos of of leaves and and, and shapes uh you anchored this whole thing over here with a nice fence post and you treated this back fence uh excellent uh nice simple shapes you could go if if um, when this dries, if you want to just play with a nice um, cool glaze on this, transparent, uh, and cool this off, maybe a shade darker. That'll make this bush pop even more. Um, I say um, unify the sameness in the shadows. Um, when you're painting the shadows, um, just create that simple shape of a shadow. The, the highlights will just read so much better. Um, and then the volume itself on the, within the shadow itself will, will just illuminate the, um, the shadow. You don't need a whole lot of detail in that, but, uh, and likewise find, Find these connecting shapes for the light on top of that surface right up in here. Good job, Karen. We're going to whiz through the these in, in about an hour. Doing a good time. Macy, Marcy, Marcy. Because uh, you're job. so organized, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> This helped me uh, kind of look at each one a little bit more. And uh, so I, I did the homework already. Um, but Marcy, good job on this one. This is a tough, tough subject. Um, I pulled these verticals in Photoshop. These are guides that we have that um, kind of offer me um, some measuring tools. But I want to... Um, just pull some of these guides in here and you nailed the, the verticals on all of these elements, um, which is good. But I would, if you're tackling something like this, this hard, I would just challenge you to go even further and put in the element of three point perspective in this. Right now, this building looks the painting itself looks like it's it's growing up and out um, but I would tuck in the top of this into a into a three-point perspective so what everybody knows what two-point perspective is you got a, a vanishing point over here and a vanishing point over here and those lines are going off into the distance to those vanishing points a third vanishing point is probably about a foot over the, your monitor and all of these horizontal, uh, the vertical elements rather, are pointing to that third point way up there. It's, it's what in reality it what really is. Uh, and it, 
makes this this top of this building come in a little bit more, makes it read a little better. Interesting watch, that you say that. Okay. Yeah, watch watch the size of the cars. Uh, they're a little large for this this scene here. Um, and I would if if you're if you've glazed before, I would I would try this. Uh, just take this this left half of the building. The lighting is is also kind of flat. It's almost directly behind you when you when you took this picture or painted the scene, and it's it's flattening the whole building out. So if you took a, a nice cool transparent ultramarine blue. And just cool this whole side of the building off mm -hmm. and maybe warmed up this side with you know transparent yellow earth or something just a nice warm glaze uh this 3d element of this building will just pop um, and then by warming this this central area up your eye is going to be attracted right to this building right to the front front door here so Steve, that we might have a couple extra minutes. Can you talk about how to do that glaze, how to make it? Yeah, make sure your painting is absolutely dry um, to the touch. You know, usually paint dries within a week or so. And um, I would mix a little Gamzol with transparent oil paint, like an ultramarine blue, cobalt blue is transparent. Uh, I use, uh, I wouldn't use yellow ochre because that's, that's opaque, um, but use transparent yellow earth to warm up the ochre, uh, to warm up the ultramarine a little bit if you need to. And just very, almost like a watercolor wash. You're glazing over um, portions of your painting. And just by cooling those off or warming them up, you're almost like in Photoshop, you're creating a, a separate layer of this. And I could actually demonstrate this. Um, so let's say this is a, um, let's select um, a nice ultramarine blue. And a brush. Let me go big with the brush. And I'm gonna, instead of 100% uh, opaque, I'm gonna go 20%. Uh, and glazing is, is just like this. It's just cooling off the, the edge of this whole building here. Okay. Ooh and ah, uh, great. And then if I wanted to warm up this side, So let's go, let's go with a, a nice, uh, almost like a nice orange. And you don't have to get, get it all, but you know, um, but it, by, by doing that, you're, you're going to be uh, putting more dimension into that building itself. Um, And if you want to go, you know, even more, go even more. Um, if not, don't worry about it. Um, if you don't like the glaze, you can wipe it off and start fresh. Just, you know, wipe it off with the Gamzol and start fresh. Uh, you, you, it's a lossless method of just pushing and pulling temperature cooling things off, warming things up. And it just adds a whole other dimension to your painting. Plus it unifies the whole thing itself. Um, I've glazed whole paintings in, in like 80% of the painting, I just threw a nice cool glaze over it and 20% I just warmed up. And just by doing that, it just unifies the whole painting. And it's just a, a, a fun way of doing that. Two great tips, three-point perspective and glazing. Thank you so much. Yeah.
I mean, if, if you're doing a, a complex building like this, go all out and do three point. <laughs> okay. okay. Patricia. Nice pastel, Patricia. This is a beautiful, beautiful painting. Uh, I love the soft diagonals you have in here, and it's just leading up to a nice horizontal. Um, good composition as far as diagonals and, and the pattern composition. Um, my only take on this uh, would offer a, a suggestion of um, taking these right off the painting, right off the edge of the painting. And don't, don't stop it right here. Um, all this color, just take it right off, like the photo it has. Because um, you're creating this, this end point right here, this false end point. And I want it, I want it to continue underneath me. Uh, and then I would say offer maybe cooling these trees off a little bit would push those further further back. Um, With uh, blue green or gray green? I, I would say a bluer, a blue green. You know, this this warm, anytime you have this warm green that's in an object that's way out in the distance, it's, it's going to bring it forward. And your intent is to push it back. So just cool those off a little bit more. Um, you can go, even go into the purples like you have back in here. That's beautiful gray back in here. And nice, nice treatment of the birds too. All right, good. Good job. <laughs> I wanted to know about that. <laughs> yeah, no, I love them. This one in particular, I like this one, this small guy. It's just, it's just like a little hint and then yeah. you're just giving us a little, just enough. Good job. Thank you Sue. so much. Oh, sure. <laughs> Sue, this is a, uh, a nice little scene in Barrington. Um, Sue is a, uh, um, we have a, a painting group that meets Friday <laughs> mornings uh, out in Palatine. And, um, Sue started this one up there, and um, it's just a really dynamic composition. Look at the U-shaped composition here. Um, I don't have the reference photo with me, um, but I know she took liberty in moving this lamp, lamp post over a little bit just, uh, just to finish this off nice U-shape. Um, watch the, the, the heat that's down in here, Sue. Uh, this, I think this is still too hot as far as uh, uh, the purple. Um, okay. But, but overall, good, good, nice, nice shadow. You kept the shadows real simple. And you, and you let the, the light really shine in. Um, watch your sky holes, though. The, the, the sky color that's back in here should be back in here. Uh, just by putting a, just a little bit of the sky into these openings, you'll open that up and, and let some air flow through that. Um, and then the, the, the car, watch, watch um, convenient placements of cars. Um, I would say you don't need the car here. Uh, this one is actually better. It's just a, a random shape that, that appears here. This is too conveniently placed in the, middle, in the middle of the edge of the painting versus the pole. Um, you could even push it behind the pole or add another one over here, but make it, you know, don't, don't put it right in the middle. Or, or I could just take it out. Or just take it out. <laughs> and then I would, uh, since this pole is in the light, I would throw some, you know, some light. I know it's a black pole, but it's still going to have some light on it. And then certainly glass up in the top here. 
but overall, it's a really nice piece. Okay, thanks. Good. Julie, this all uh, this also looks like a pastel. Um, nicely done. Good good leading lines on this one. Uh, look at this nice strong arc leading us right into this, what I think is the center of interest, which is um, either a bridge or an architectural element. Um, it's the difference of color that is clearly attracting our eye to there. Um, you could cool off or lighten up, I would say in value, lighten up these trees back in here. As dark as these are in the photograph, or in reality, um, they're conflicting with the, um, the bridge a little bit. And I think if you lighten that up slightly, it'll, it'll pop that bridge even more. You could throw some of this light green down, down in here that, that'll also help us focus in on this area as your center of interest. Um, watch your perspective on this curve. Um, I think I think the 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 tightness of the curve is going to be up at the top here, and it's going to be gentler coming down. Um, and then, uh, don't be afraid of of lines as far as shadows are concerned. You know, there's a, a definite shadow out here that's going to anchor this whole bottom part. And again, force our eye up into this uh, center of interest. And then watch the repetitive shapes of the clouds. Um, you know, I would say make this this cloud because it's farther away. Make this this one smaller, and this one slightly bigger. I think that'll that'll help that linear perspective um, that we have in the sky. Overall, really nice piece, Julie. Well, Steve, before yeah. you go on, um, there's sort of a question related to what we were talking about before, but um, and so there's a little discussion going on in the chat about oh, okay. how to, you know, once once a painting is has dried, like you're talking about, um, and you were talking about glazes before. I think yep. the question is, how do you lighten if if transparency dark and you know uh, right. It's right. How do you lighten something? You can you can um, you can put a light wash on the glaze, but it's you're going to need um, uh, some opaque paint in there. Um, you can glaze with light, but uh, I would rather not do that and and just paint lighter paint, lighter opaque paint on top of the what you already have. Uh, you could also oil in the painting itself and and throw some lighter washes uh, on those uh, on those areas. Um, was there a particular painting that? Well, it was during this one, and and um, uh, I, Lori, when you said to uh, to do, yeah, to lighten the trees, I was just wondering if I can use a wash on that or not. On uh, Lori's. Well, just in general, you know, in terms of how how we let's can uh, fix yeah, the let's, let's try it on Lori's. Um, let me select these shapes of trees here. And and Clayton was adding in about scumbles lighten. Uh, glazes are transparent and scumbles are opaque. Scumbles, okay. <laughs> Good. Thanks, Clayton. Okay, so let me just just throw a um, kind of a light glaze, a scumble on this uh, on this one here, and I'm going to go. Uh, let's say ten percent on this one. And it's just it's just opening that up a little bit. Um, I 
And if I went, oh, let's go 20%. Let's see, 20% does. Let's split the difference. So, so just by like a 15% lightness to those dark areas, uh, you're, you push those trees back and, but you still have um, light, lighter darks in the water. And I think it reads better. You've created more air back in here. Um, it is dark in, in the photo, but um, you could try that um, if it's a dry painting. Um, try that scumbling. Like a light, like a lighter, paler. Lighter, yeah, like a lighter, darker green. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're done with Julie. Virginia is next. Um, really nice sketch here, Virginia. Um, looks like you've it was quickly done. Um, you may not have had a whole lot of time, but it's just really well captures the the depth and the distance that you you uh, I love the value of this green and the coolness of that you stepped it up stepped it up and then you could have gone a little bit darker or richer in color on this tree um, because you have this old brass shape down in here uh, you can include some of that some of that richer greens up in, into this tree. Um, I say strong, stronger center of interests. Um, ask yourself where your eye is going in this scene. What actually do you want to be the center of interest? Right now it's, it's gonna be right in here because you've got the highest contrast between the darkest dark and the lightest light. You've got the su super sharp edges. If that's where your center of interest is, um, you nailed it um, because that's where my eye is going. If it wants to be up in here, you have to make changes down in here. The power of the edge is is so powerful. Um, you know, just just pay attention to that that attraction that edges have for the eye in your in your painting. I would say treat this shadow shape up in here, almost unify the, the sameness of this shadow shape and, and you can get away with a lot of this. Um, and then if, if this is not the center of interest, if it's more or less an anchor to the painting and you want the center of interest coming out in here or maybe going out to here, um, tone this area down. But beautiful color in the sky. I love the big shapes up in here and smaller and squishier clouds. Um, good job, Virginia. Linda, this is a beautiful little piece, Linda. Um, Thank you. Again, good leading lines coming in here. Um, don't be afraid of of getting some hard shadow shapes down in here. Um, some meteor, meteor shapes, less soft edges. Uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna anchor this whole piece a little bit more to the ground. Um, but I love, I love the patterns of trees coming up. Uh, and then um, beautiful painting up in here. This, this area is just exquisite. Don't be afraid of the edges though, either. Um, you're, you're giving us another shape so close to the edge that it's not worth it. Uh, so just paint the tree right off. You know, if, if the center of interest is down in here, like the photograph, you know, look how unified that shadow is. It goes right up into the tree and my eye is, drawn to this high contrast area right here. 
all this up in here, all this is support for this down in here, what you're going to be saying down in here. So, um, and I love how you treated the water. It's just pure Monet. Um, the softness of that horizon. Mary, take note <laughs> of this water. Um, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay. Stephen. Um, here's Stephen's reference photo. He's kind of midway into his painting up in here. Um, excellent shapes on, on, the, on the sky. Um, solid light source coming in from the left. Um, and notice, notice Stephen's um, approach to painting his distant tree shapes. You know, he's got this, this warmish gray, light green value, and he's not breaking that up with darker values, even though they're darker back in here. He's, he's limiting his value range to a very close. Here's the lightest light that he's using. Here's the darkest dark. That's pushing that a mile away. The middle ground, he's putting his emphasis on, you know, a nice tree leaning in toward the center of interest. And then, you know, he's got some good shapes up in here for uh, the foreground. But um, if I were to name this painting, Stephen, I would call this social distance because <laughs> you've captured the the feeling of isolation on this this painting it's just this thing is all by itself clearly this is 60 feet away <laughs> and it's it's wanting to get closer um so that's that's what i'm seeing on this um this shape up in here um i would break this up a little bit more this is a nice rectangle a nice triangle uh, you could break that up a little bit more. But overall, really good. You nailed the uh, the depth. This this Glad to be. appreciate it. Middle shapes and then the foreground shapes. And again, big, nice, big clouds, medium clouds, and then if you were to have the smaller ones back in here, it'd just be a line. Good job. Ed. Thank you, Robin. Hey, you're nailing those these greens, Robin. Um, good, cool gray greens back in here, like Stevens was. You 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 didn't darken in the you know even though you have this dark green back in here, you didn't put it in, which is good. Um, what I'd like to have seen on this one, and again, I think this, if we do have time, um, I just want to show you what a, um, let's go 50% on this shadow. Um, the shadow is too soft, Robin. So I would, this whole painting is all about the shadow. And I think, I think you, you could have just filled this in with more shadow. Oh, yeah, interesting. Uh, let's go around that. Shadow, 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 except for this tree. There and there. All of that is shadow. So if you were to glaze this, um, That's a wrong blue, but just create a nice, cool shape for this. And let me um, darken that. Turn off the selection. But look at how strong that made that. Um, 
It helps a lot. <laughs> you know, it killed the lightness that you have in the windows. So you're blowing the you're blowing the the overall shadow shape that's that's in this building by blowing the light in the window. Mm -hmm. You're seeing some reflected light, but but by just muting that whole shape down, you're you're creating a much more interesting painting. And, and the painting now becomes all about the light that this this light that you have down in here. And then up in here. Yeah. And then the light in this tree. Um, so I would try glazing it and this diminishing the, the light parts that you have in, within the shadow. Um, because okay. you're you're blowing the illusion that this is all in shadow anyway, you know, by trying to get reflected light in, into the windows and things like that. But, yeah, I couldn't resist. It was windows. Oh. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, much, it's much better with, um, with the shadow. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And again, this is, this is Photoshop. So if, if you don't have Photoshop uh, and want to learn it, it's it's a it's a good investment. Um, you could do all kinds of things with your art. Um, let me just show you one one thing. This is um, the layer options. You can create these. Um, if you want it even darker, you can multiply it. So it'll take that blue that I did and just multiply the shadows that are underneath that you painted even darker. And, and this is at 50%. Okay. Um, you could do some pretty cool things uh, with Photoshop. Steve, yeah. when do you. Yep. I didn't hear you. When, when do you use Photoshop in your process? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, I will, I will take, you know, I like, I love taking. I'm a, I, I love photography. I, I love capturing photography. And if there's a photo I, I took that I want to paint later on, whether it's in watercolor or oil, I will bring it into Photoshop and I will play with it like I'm doing here. Uh, I would create layers upon layers and outline certain shapes with fine edges and play with the the layer options to just bring out that from that photograph, from that reference material, the best that I could possibly do. So I'll, I'm adding elements of design, elements of temperature. I'll throw some warmth into the photograph. Uh, I'll cool off areas, and it's just giving me additional uh, knowledge or uh, that I may not have seen out in the field. So it's just giving me options. Uh, I could save it, I could create another layer and, and try something else. And believe it or not, doing that in Photoshop allows me to you know, be more innovative, be more imaginative out in the field. Because I'm out there thinking, okay, I'm at Photoshop, I'm just, throwing these layers on there, these warm layers, these cool layers. Lightroom is another amazing program that you could do this to as well. Um, but it's not that expensive. It's, it's a steep learning curve, but uh, it's well worth it. And, um, and maybe we should have a lesson on that alone. Um, but um, I created, this is all, all, this is one whole Photoshop document that I created all these all these layers of uh, with each name and I you know open up the layers each each grouping and here's Tom's layer or Tom's group rather and then within his group is all these different layers um, in building this one scene. So it's, it's, it's just a fun program. You can play with it till the cows come home, which there should be some cows in this scene, but. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Tom, this is this is a stellar painting. Uh, I love absolutely loved building this this in Photoshop. I just love every part of this. Uh, I love the cool, and everybody should take note on on the value and the coolness of this background hill, um, background tree shape back in here. Uh, his his sketches are are outstanding. Um, he's given us long linear lines for just again creating that stable tranquil scene um where he does have trees tom you you just brought it straight up look at how simple he created the shadow um it probably took you a minute to create that um uh, and then this this hard edge right in here you left this hard edge because my eye goes right to here um look at how and then i love the uh the variety of of colors that Scott mentioned this last week as uh, if you guys caught it, uh, more points to you. But Tom just nailed it as far as taking the same value of your greens and just slightly offsetting a warmer or cooler um, green at the same value gives variety to that shape. And you nailed it, Tom. Um, Thanks. You you chose not to put this red fence in there. Uh, again, a good good edit. You don't have to paint everything you see. Um, my only concern or, or comment would be it's so small, but watch this uh, sky hole. It's yeah. it's too blue. Uh, I think you you put paint that's up in here down in here. Um, when you're doing those sky holes, get them, get them a little, mix this color with a little of this color. Yeah. So take your sky color that's here, take a little dab of this dark green and mix it in and then you'll get that nice gray. Um, and if you need to brighten it up a little bit, just put a little dot of that in there and uh, of this bright white this light right in the middle of that sky hole and it'll just sing. Other than that, it's, this is sign it and sell it because it's a beautiful painting. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Steve, appreciate it. Good. All right, Sharon, this is a beautiful piece, Sharon. This is, um, I, I gave a little post about uh, painting reality versus um, uh, your emotions. And I think you nailed this one, Shannon, as far as um, just taking this complex scene of umbrellas and beaches and you just threw paint down and had fun doing it. Um, this, the best part of this painting, I is everybody should be looking at this. The way you painted these people is, is just pure magic. Um, if this is the size of your people, um, and this is going back into the distance, watch the size of this lifeguard. This lifeguard is nine feet tall. Okay. Um, just make sure that they're in, in right proportion to that. And then um, watch the alignment of these umbrellas. If, if yeah. this umbrella is in the foreground of this one, this one's going to be bigger. Kind of made a pyramid. Yeah. yeah. You, can, you can offset this this blue umbrella maybe over here. Yeah. And still, and still uh, improve it. But beautiful, beautiful painting. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's funny. I spent the whole morning on a very tight, serious painting and ended up feeling it was kind of boring. And then the last 20 minutes before I left, I had a little, you know, five, uh, four by six and just threw some paint on it really oh, quick. Wow. what I like better. <laughs> but this is, this is, this is the, the magic right in here. This the way you just painted through the paint down on these people. Uh, you could do the same thing 
just keep it real loose, just populate, you know, a few little things here and there. Um, again, implying versus describing is the key for this. Um, you, you nailed it. Good job. Thanks. Coon. Yes. Way to go on making this a moonlight um, versus. <laughs> This is a, a, a really good exercise of, of painting, uh, I think, a limited palette even. You're painting in the cools, uh, even though this is a nice warm painting uh, scene, you're, you're limiting the cool to the warms up. Nice, bold center of interest. This light behind this, uh, this little structure is, is clearly your center of interest. You've got the heart, highest contrast, the brightest bright up against the darkest dark. Everything else is leading up to that. Um, good array of lily pads in here. Um, I like the little treatment of color even. Uh, and then this beautiful purple in the shadows is bringing some of that color back up in here. Uh, I love how you you use the, the tree shapes, even though they're not up in here, in the reference photo, you use the tree shapes as lines to bring us back into here. Uh, you've created this nice arching umbrella-like shape over in here. Again, a strong leading line leading up us right to there. Watch, my only concern is, is watch these, these light parts way off in the distance. Hmm. Better to treat them real soft and like this. This is beautiful. beautiful. Hmm. Um, just tone these down a little bit, and it's it's a magic painting. Thank you. Good job. Appreciate it, Errol. Good good job on this one, Errol. Um, good. Look at the leading lines in this one. Big strong swoosh leading up to what I want to be the center of interest is right in here. Um, it, it has a nice light area right in here. I'm missing that light section right, right in here. Um, in other words, the, uh, my, the center of interest that I am going to is right over here. It's, it's the light area, the shape up against this dark area. Uh, I love how you treated that soft edge right in here, but I want I want a, something brighter happening right in here on this this uh, in but, abutment and bridge. But beautiful treatment of the of the trusses and uh, look at the active brushwork on this one. Good, good. You've again I you shown the grid of the city. Good job, Errol. Nalina, first word that comes to mind is whimsical on this one. Uh, I even see a little unicorn in the sky here. Um, it's, it's just a, a beautiful piece, Nalina. Um, look at the boldness of the, of the brushwork. Um, reminds me of Van Gogh. Um, it's just, you're just you're just throwing the paint down, and it's it's beautiful, beautiful work. Look at the size of of the brushwork shapes that are in the foreground here, and she's getting smaller and smaller and smaller as she goes back. That's that's linear perspective. That's pushing that horizon back further. Um, I love the curve of the Earth you even got, and then this is boat sailing off. Um, again, good leading lines. Watch the warmth of this. It works. Uh, it might be too warm for how far back it is, but uh, it's, 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 there's so much action in this, in this piece. Um, it, works, it works really well. Good job. Thank you. Gene, Gene, again, look at the leading lines in this one. 
the, the, the line work of the patterns of, of the grass just all pointing to the clearly center of interest. Um, good shapes up in here, again, pointing us down, pointing us down. Um, the shed, again, the shadow on this, this figure, uh, figure is well painted. Uh, watch the hands and the feet. They're a little small, um, a little tight on the feet. You could open up the stance a little bit, maybe a little larger shoes. But other than that, um, very well painted. I'm, I'm wanting more light. Uh, you've got great light in this, in this scene, but I'm wanting more light on his shoulder, uh, on his hood, on his hat and in backpack and, and maybe even in his pants. Um, you've given us little slivers of light, but I, I just think you can go more. Um, good value control too in the background. That, that, that goes way back there and then you, nice stronger values up front. Good job, Gene. We only have a few more. Anne. This is a, a beautiful little watercolor, Anne. Um, nice, nice leading lines. Again, define where your center of interest is going to be. Uh, if you have architecture in this overall large piece, you have a small section of architecture, your eye is going here. Um, I think for the distance, of these buildings, you don't need all this detail. Um, look at how this, this, all these buildings here are almost like a, a drape of gauze that's like two miles away. Um, if you want that distance, simplify and unify the, the shapes of those, those distant buildings. You, you're still going to get that center of interest. Um, you just don't need all that detail in there. Uh, and then focusing on the, on, on the warmth, my eye is going over to here to this warmth, focusing on that, put some warmth over in this area, and then maybe cool this area off. Uh, so Steve, um, he, this being a watercolor, can she still glaze with watercolor? Um, uh, not, uh, if it's light enough, you can. Um, you'd have to lift this up because for the most part, watercolor is all transparent. If you wanted to go into, with opaque, you can do that. Um, uh, lavender is a really good color to use to create this, this shape. This is a beautiful lavender. You can get a little hint of dark up at the top of the Hancock. But look at the fog and the coolness in that air. Um, and then as far as the, um, the ripples in the water, just incorporate those in that in the reflection itself. It looks like a, a uh, second thought. Um, approach to that. And it doesn't incorporate it into the, the reflections. Okay, good, good. Muriel. Um, this looks like it was from the Botanic Gardens. Uh, I cropped her reference photo just to show the painting. And um, again, a beautiful piece, Muriel. Um, look at the, the, the shapes and the movement of these, these leaf pads and lines. Um, watch the, the linear perspective in here. Uh, these, these lily pads back in here should be getting flatter and skinnier. Um, you know, good thickness on these. This one might be a little too round. Um, for the, the position that it's in, it might, might need to be a little, little flatter. 
Um, what I didn't see on this within your painting itself is really the direction of lights. Uh, it looks like an overcast day versus a sunlit scene um, or even a moonlit scene in here. There's very little direction of light other than a few little shadows here and there. Um, so really establish and know where your light source is coming from. Um, and, um, and incorporate that in, even in the shapes of these flowers. But overall, really good, really good mood for this one. Thank you. Clayton. Last but not least, Clayton, excellent job on this one, Clayton. Um, stellar piece. Look at the leading lines he has on this, all leading up to the portrait. Um, again, Mary, take note of this color of this water uh, of the lake. Uh, super subtle, pushed back, and then he, he let loose uh, on the foreground shapes. Uh, Again, free flowing. I love the treatment of this tree. Look at the nice halo that he's, he's created, a super subtle halo around her to, um, but then tied in very gently to her hair. Um, excellent tree shape in there. Uh, I, I love the little hint of color here and here. I would just include a little bit, maybe right in here of this, this burnt sienna just to keep that flow of, of color. Um, and it's, it's right in there. Um, other than that, it's, it's beautiful, beautifully treated. Look at that, the use of edges, super soft, soft edges. And where he needs it, you know, he's, he's gonna have hard edges in there. This is a big painting too, I think. Um, you know, 15 by 30, I think it was. Yeah. Good job, Clayton. No, thank you very much. All right. Any any other questions? We went through a lot. Um, without a break, too. So, <laughs> <laughs> Steve, I have a, a thought about asking you to come back uh, when you are available, but that we would uh, do nocturnes. And yeah. for because we normally would have done a nocturne somewhere, you know, once a month, and we haven't done any. And I'm wondering if you might come back and that we would uh, think about doing that. And yes, yes. Um, I would do, I, I painted nocturnes professionally as, as an architectural illustrator for the city of Abu Dhabi, believe it or not. Um, but I haven't done much nocturne plain air painting. Um, I, you know, I, I may not be the best one. I think Errol might be a better choice for nocturnes. He, he probably would tell you no, but I think <laughs> I can, uh, um, my sense is that that would be a good thing. And I also um, am thinking now as it's dark outside, I, there was after some of these at nine o'clock, I was going out for a walk because it was still light out. And right yeah. now at 821, it's dark outside. So it means that we could be painting earlier in the evening and being out. So, um, you know, I, I guess what I would say to people is let's um, go ahead and uh, try to get in a nocturne. Um, and I'll see what I can do to. I would say, even if, if, you know, this is the plein air painting of painters of Chicago. Um, but if, if you're reluctant to paint nocturnes just because of safety or, or you've never done it, try, try it, you know, first from a photograph and, and, you know, imagine yourself being outside or from the screen and, and painting it that way. Uh, you know, certainly nocturne paintings from life is is a challenge, and we should all do that. I've done a few of them, but not with much success. My again, two cents on nocturne painting is is have a have a really strong design, have a plan, 
mix the paint up beforehand, even if you're doing sunsets and, and just slam that painting in. Um, don't spend a whole lot of time on it. You know, you've already done the work. Now it's just executing, putting the paint down and, uh, and letting those brush fly. Hey, a lot of chats. Yep, most of them complimentary to you, Steve. Oh, good. Well, thank you. I enjoy it. Well, did, did the Photoshop format help? Oh, uh, yeah, I think you've set a yeah. new bar for these critique sessions. It's sort of, okay. I would just write. Good, good. You know, I was thinking, you know, debating whether to put the, the notes on the side, um, but I, I hope it helped you guys take notes. Yeah. And, um, you, you, you would, you know, I, I saw some patterns, but you guys are, are, are just killing it this year. I'm seeing so much improvement, uh, leaps and bounds. So I think we had, we have Mary and COVID to thank for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Typhoid, Mary. Can, can can all can all <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Mary and COVID together. <laughs> well, Steve, thank you very much for uh, taking all the effort and time to put this together. And thank oh, you yeah. for all the great comments. Yeah. My A lot pleasure. of work. Thank Good. you. Yeah, thank you. It was fun. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Mary.